Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King on you, Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. The principle of the best education possible for our children has been one of the basic cornerstones of our nation. But the ever-increasing enrollment in elementary schools has resulted in poor educational conditions in many communities across the country. Most important, there is an insufficiency of elementary school teachers. Teaching is an occupation that is more attractive now than ever before, since there is a growing public interest in education and measures are being taken to improve schools. Such a career offers exceptional opportunities for intelligent, imaginative young men and women who are now in college. The lack of teachers is only one side of this problem. Some places require additional school buildings. Others need more equipment, textbooks, and personnel. If these problems are to be met and solved, the cooperation of every citizen is a must. See what you can do. Better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sheep camp in Alaska was the last stop-off point for the gold rushers before crossing Shilkoot Pass into the Yukon Territory. The camp was a small tent city huddled in the valley near the foot of the pass. One evening, a young woman named Lucy Hallam was preparing to cook supper just outside her tent when her husband, Frank, approached carrying an armload of firewood. Oh, welcome home, Woodchopper. Hi, Lucy. All ready to cook us some supper? Just as soon as you get a fire going with some of that wood you brought back. Sure, I'll have one started in a jiffy. By golly, this Yukon stove we bought is going to come in mighty handy on the trail. Yeah, I saw you coming back with that man who has a tent next to ours. Yeah, we gathered wood together. He and his sister are on their way to Dawson, too. Oh, well, they're walking over this way now. He said he'd like to have the four of us get acquainted. Hope you don't mind. Well, of course not. It'll be nice to have some friends up here. Well, howdy, Frank. Hello there. Seeing as how we're neighbors, I thought I might as well bring my sister over, introduce her to you folks. I'm glad you did. Lucy, this is Art Gerald. How do you do? Howdy, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Allen. Uh, this is my sister, Grace. Hello, Howdy. Grace. How do you do, Grace? My brother tells me you folks aren't gold rushers like most of the others here at Sheep Camp. Uh, no, that's right. We're going up to Dawson City to claim an inheritance. An inheritance? From my grandfather. He owns a mine on Bonanza Creek. Say, maybe I know him. I was up in the Klondike last year. Oh, well, his name's Ben Chadwick. Ben Chadwick? No, I reckon the name's not familiar to me. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I hardly know him myself. I haven't seen him since I was a little girl. You see, I was raised in the East, and Grandpa spent all his time prospecting. First out west, and then up in Alaska and the Yukon. And he finally struck it rich, huh? <laughs> yes, he got in on the first big strike on Bonanza. You said he owns a mine. Does that mean he's still alive? <sighs> I hope so, but I don't know. We had a letter from him saying that he was very sick and might not live more than a few days. He said he was leaving his mind to me and wanted us to come up to the Yukon right away. From the way his letter sounded, I'm afraid he'll be dead by the time we arrive. Oh, shame. Yes, we'd both like to see him. I'm afraid he's been very lonely these last few years. How about you folks? Are you hoping to stake out a claim for yourself? Oh, no, no, Frank. Swinging a pick is a little out of our line. I'm a faro dealer by occupation. Grace here is a singer. She's hoping to find a job in one of the music halls in Dawson. If you were up in the Klondike last year, I suppose... A you'd short be... time later, when the Jarrows had returned to their own tent, Grace remarked to her brother... So little Mrs. Hallam is going to inherit a mine. Yeah, in 
Probably a plenty rich one, too, if it's located on Bonanza Creek. Looks like we'd better keep in close touch with those two suckers. Maybe we can relieve them of some of that fortune they'll be coming into. <laughs> I got a better idea than that. Oh, such as what? Why not grab the whole inheritance for ourselves? And just how would we do that? By passing ourselves off as Mr. and Mrs. Hallam. Are you crazy? Oh, far from it. All we've got to do is get them out of the way and get hold of their identification papers. The rest will be a stench. Maybe, and maybe not. What if her grandfather is still alive by the time we get to Dawson? Well, what if he is? You're a blonde, same as she is. The old guy hasn't seen her since she was a little kid. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hey, maybe we could get away with it at that. I uh, sure we could. But how are we going to get rid of the Hallam? Now, listen, Grace, you leave that to me. In the meantime, we'll get real chummy with him. And you pump the dame every chance you get for details about her family history. <laughs> That should be easy enough. Who ever heard of a woman who didn't like to talk? In the days that followed, the Jarrows and the Hallams became increasingly intimate. On the shore of Lake Bennett, they camped side by side, while Frank and Art built a boat long enough to carry all four of them across the chain of lakes and down the Yukon to Dawson City. One evening, after they had begun the trip downriver, they had beached their boat and were talking around the campfire. Grace was saying to Lucy Hallam, You know, Lucy... Hearing you tell about your childhood and your family, that makes me feel as though we've been friends all our lives. <laughs> if Lucy keeps on reminiscing so much, you'll soon know more about it than I do. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't keep talking about myself all the time, but Grace makes such a good audience, it's hard to resist the temptation. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Art, how soon do you think we'll reach Fort Selker? Oh, I reckon we ought to make it by tomorrow night. Oh, that reminds me, Frank. A friend of mine has a cabin a few miles this side of Selker. Would you mind if we stopped off there long enough for, for me to say hello? It's okay with me. How about it, Lucy? Why, of course. Oh, that's swell. You find this friend of mine's a very interesting gent. He'll make you folks feel right at home. The following afternoon, their boat brought them in sight of the cabin where Art's friend lived. After nosing their boat into the beach, the travelers disembarked and walked up to the cabin. Art knocked on the door. Well, I'll be doggone. Art Gerald. Howdy, Spider. Uh, come on in. Come on sure. in. <laughs> hey, where's Jake? Hey, he went into Shilkirk this morning. Did you just get back to the territory? Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. on my way to Dawson. Hey, folks, meet Spider Bird. This is my sister, Grace. Howdy, Spider. Uh, Art told me about you. Yeah. Nothing bad, I hope. And this young couple here is Mr. and Mrs. Hallam. Hello, Hello Mr. Bird. Any friends of art or friends of mine? Say, uh, you think you could entertain the two of them here at your cabin for the next few weeks? Yeah. What? Well, what are you talking about? Uh, we're not staying here. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong. Get hey, your what? hands up, hey. both of you. A gun? Say, for the love of Mike, what's this all about? That's what I'd like to know. Well, it's like this. Lucy here was going to Dawson to inherit a mine from her grandfather. But the way Grace and I figured, we might just as well claim that inheritance for ourselves. Oh, you shut up or I'll shut you up permanently. As I was saying, Grace and I figured to grab off the mine ourselves. As soon as the will's settled, we'll sell the mine and head back here with the cash. And where do I come in on the deal? Now, you and Jake hold the two of them prisoner here at your cabin. While Grace and I are pulling off the scheme. Why not kill him and be done with it? No sense risking murder till we're sure the scheme will pan out. Besides, we may need more information from them later on. Yeah, I reckon you're right at that. Now, as soon as Grace and I get back here, we'll get rid of the Helens and split the cash between us. Then we'll head for the state. <laughs> Son, you just made yourself a deal. <laughs> that same day, Sergeant Preston went to visit Ben Chadwick at his cabin on Bonanza Creek. He found the old sourdough propped up in bed. How are you feeling, Ben? About the same, I reckon, Sergeant. No better, no worse. Well, I think you're looking a bit stronger. Maybe so. Doc says I must be a lot tougher than I look. Old fool figured I'd be dead by this time. He'll probably live to be a hundred. I'll be satisfied if I last long enough to see my granddaughter Lucy again. Is she coming up here for a visit? Yep. In fact, that's what I wanted to see you about. What do you mean? Well, Constable Ross stopped by yesterday. He said you two would be heading south tomorrow. That's right. We're going to Bennett Post to keep order among the gold rushes. Lucy and her husband ought to be arriving here in the Yukon one of these days. In fact, maybe they're inside already. So I was wondering if you should happen to run into him, would you sort of give him a helping hand and let him know I'm still alive and kicking? Why, certainly. Ben, I'd be glad to. What are their names? Hallam. 
Lucy and Frank Hallam. How long has it been since you've seen your granddaughter? Doggone it all. I hate to think how long it's been. Haven't laid eyes on her since she was just a little tag about knee high to a grasshopper. Now she's a grown woman. Probably right pretty one, too. Least way she is if she takes after her ma. Is that her mother's picture over there on the table? Yep, that's right, Sergeant. That's Lucy's ma taken just before she got married. I suppose she got her good looks from you. <laughs> Who's denying it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, I'll inquire about Lucy and her husband when I get to Lake Bennett. The police there may be able to tell me whether they've entered the territory yet. Thank you, Sergeant. And if you do meet up with them, tell them not to waste any time getting here. It was several days after his conversation with old Ben Chadwick that Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross rode through Selkirk on their way south. The great dog king was romping along beside the sergeant's horse. This place has really grown since the last time we were here. Yes, Alex, the whole territory's booming now that this gold stampede's underway. <laughs> the old time sourdoughs will soon be saying the territory's getting too crowded. I've already heard that remark in Dawson. Speaking of old-timers, I paid a visit to Ben Chadwick last week. So did I, the day before we left. He told me his granddaughter and her husband are on their way up here from the States. I hope they make it in time. You suppose he'll last much longer? Hard to tell. The doctor says he's in bad shape. But Ben's a tough old party. He may be around for quite a while yet. I wouldn't be surprised at that. <laughs> All right, King, we're coming, boy. Get up, Lucky. Get on it. Sometime later that afternoon, Spider Burke rushed into the cabin where Lucy and her husband were being held prisoner. Frank and Lucy were tied to chairs, while a tough-looking younger crook called Jake was playing solitaire at the table. Well, what's wrong with you, Spider? Plenty, Jake. There's a couple of money headed this way. Howdy, yeah. I told you the law would catch up with well, you. Well, you shut up. I suppose those red coats will stop off here? I don't know, but we can't take any chances. We get in tattoos too fast. What do we do with them? Well, the money is right up in front of the cabin. Then take Hallam, duck out the back door. Keep him flattened against the cabin wall. And make sure he don't make any squawks. Don't worry. I'll have a gun in his ribs every second. It is for you, sister. You're going to stay here with me and make out like you're my daughter. Can you just wait till those nannies get here? I'm going to tell him everything. You tell him nothing. Because if you do, your husband's life won't be worth a plug nickel. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat, Quaker Puffed Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop Wheat and Rice and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. Now to continue. It was customary for the mounted police on duty in the Yukon Territory to stop off and pay a short friendly visit whenever passing an isolated cabin. And so, when Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross arrived at Spider Burke's cabin, they reined up and dismounted. Oh, my God. Hello, I'm Sergeant Preston, and this is Constable Ross. Well, how do you do? Burke's my name. Spider Burke, my friends call me. <laughs> Never could figure out why. <laughs> we were just passing by. Do you mind if we come in and rest for a few minutes? Why, shucks, no. Come on in. Make yourself right to home. Thanks. This is my daughter. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down, sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> Brew up a cup of tea. Oh, no, don't bother. That's not necessary. Oh, it's no trouble. No trouble at all. I like a cup of tea myself along about this time of the afternoon. Well, go ahead, dear. Yes, Father. How's everything going in this part of the territory? Any trouble lately? Nope. I can't recollect anything out of the ordinary. Of course, there's been a lot of stampeders going by on the 
river ever since the thaw. Do you trap for a living? Yeah, I do a little trapping in the winter. Rest of the time, Father, I... What is it, dear? I... I can't seem to find the teeth. Oh, you can't, eh? Well, just a second, I'll get it for you. <clears throat> Maybe uh, you better sit down. I'll make the tea. Yeah? All right. My uh, daughter just got up here from the States a couple of days ago. Things are still kind of strange to her around the cabin. Oh? Did you make the trip alone? No, I... I uh, came with friends. White Pass or Chilkoot? Chilkoot. Your friends live around here somewhere? Why, why no, they... They went on to Dawson. Oh? Uh, gold rushes they are. Open to stake out a claim for themselves. Now, uh, personally, I never could see why folks should get so hurt. That same afternoon, Grace and Art Gerald arrived at Ben Chadwick's cabin on Bonanza Creek, not far from Dawson, and presented themselves as Lucy and Frank Hallam. <laughs> the old man held Grace well, at arm's well, length as he exclaimed, So you're my little granddaughter, Lucy. That's right, Grandfather. <laughs> and this is my husband, Frank. Hello, Grandfather. Sure, I'm glad to meet you, young fella. You don't know how anxious I've been to see you two. It's been the same with us. We were terribly afraid we might be too late. Well, you made it in time, so I reckon we can all be thankful. But you know, Lucy, you sure have changed. What? Changed? Well, what I mean is your face seems different somehow. You don't look the way I expected. I, I was just a little girl the last time you saw me. That's true, but you used to take after your ma. I figured you'd grow up to look just the way she does in that picture over there. Well, I, I suppose I have changed. But what about you, Grandfather? I mean, your condition. What does the doctor say? Oh, shucks. I'm beginning to think that sawbones doesn't know any more about it than I do. I'm old and sick, and one of these days I'll be cashing in my chips. But he doesn't know just how soon it'll be, and neither do I. Have you been living here at the cabin all by yourself? Hasn't anyone been taking care of you? Just that Indian half-breed who answered the door when you knocked. He comes in during the day and gets my meals for me. Well, now that we're here, I reckon you can get rid of that Indian. Yes, that's right, Grandfather. From now on, Frank and I will be taking care of you. Meanwhile, after leaving the cabin, Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross were continuing their ride southward. You know, Alex, I can't help thinking I've seen that girl somewhere before. She certainly acted nervous. Yes, almost as though she were frightened about something. Whenever I tried to draw her into conversation, Spider-Burke kept butting in and changing the subject. Yes, I noticed that. That business about not being able to find things around the cabin struck me as rather odd, too. Burke claims she just arrived from the States a couple of days ago. Well, even so, that's time enough to learn where the tea's kept. Do you suppose there's anything wrong? I don't know. Probably it's just my... Now, wait a minute. Whoa, buggy. Whoa. Whoa. What's the matter, Sergeant? Now I know why that girl's face seemed familiar. What do you mean? When you visited Ben Chadwick, did you notice that picture of his daughter on the table beside his bunk? Not particularly. Why? That girl back at the cabin is practically a double of the girl in the well, picture. She couldn't be Ben's daughter. No, but she could be his granddaughter, Lucy Hallam. Come on, Alex. We're going back down and investigate. Get around. Get around. Sergeant Preston realized that he had been seen the last time he approached the cabin. So on this visit, he and the constable left their horses a short distance away and crept forward using every available cover. Before entering, the constable and Preston peered cautiously through the window. Holy mackerel. They've got the girl tied to a chair. Yes, so I see. That young fellow sitting beside her is tied up, too. If the girl is Lucy Hallam, that's probably her husband. I wonder who that other fellow is. The one talking to Spider Burke. I don't know. Come on. Get your hands up. The monkey. I'll get him. Oh, you don't. Man's Dropping suddenly behind Lucy's chair, Spider Burke grabbed the gun which had fallen from Jake's hand. Now get your hands, you oh. big coach. You'd better drop that gun, Burke. Uh, Don't make me laugh. Either one of you can fire at me without hitting the girl. But I can plug you any time I want it. Now get your hands up. Sorry, Burke, but I warned you to drop that gun. Take him, King! With her attention focused on the two mollies, neither Spider nor Jake had seen the dog edging around the room until it was too late. Don't make a move, mister, or you'll stop another bullet. All right, all right. You got him, but he's Jake Preston. Get this gun away from me. Call him off. Take his gun, Alex. All right, Sergeant. I have it. All right, King. On guard, boy. That one nearly killed me. Stand up and stop your whining. If King had wanted to kill you, you'd be a dead man by now. How about doing something for this arm of mine? I tell you, it's busted. I'll attend to your arm in due time. First of all, it's a little matter of handcuffing your partner and untying these two people. Keep them covered, Constable. I've got them, Sergeant. 
A few minutes later, Lucy and Frank Hallam had been released from their bond. I don't know how we can ever thank you enough. When you two left the cabin early this afternoon, I just about gave up hope. It sure looks bad for us. How'd you ever happen to come back? Both the constable and I suspected that something might be wrong, and then I remembered why your wife's face seemed so familiar to me. You mean you've seen us before? You're Lucy and Frank Hallam, aren't you? That's right. How did you know? Just before I left Dawson, your grandfather showed me a picture of your mother. You're almost a double for her. Oh, then his grandpa's still alive. He was a few days ago, but he was very ill. Oh, Frank, we have to get to him as quickly as possible. You still haven't told me how you happen to be prisoners here. On our way up here, we got friendly with a pair of crooks named Grace and Art Gerald. They heard my wife was going to inherit a mine, and they decided to grab the inheritance for themselves. They're posing as you two? That's right. They talked us into stopping off here at this cabin and then got these two men to hold us prisoner while they went on to Dawson. In that case, I'd better head back to Dawson myself. If your grandfather's still alive, they may try to get rid of him. Oh, I never even thought of that. What about the prisoner, Sergeant? I'll take them to Selkirk as soon as I've bandaged this fellow's arm. And you bring back horses for Mr. and Mrs. Hallam while I strike out for Dawson. Right. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult, and you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. That night, after Ben Chadwick had fallen asleep, Grace and Art Jarrow held a council of war. It looks to me like we may not get our hands on the old man's mind quite as soon as we thought. Yeah, just what I was thinking. For all we know, he may hang on for weeks or even months. Listen, I can keep up this loving little granddaughter act for a while, but not that long. Uh, Don't worry. We won't wait that long. What do you mean? We'll string along with him for two or three days, see if he shows any signs of getting weaker. If not, we'll take matters into our own hands. Grace and Art watched the old man's condition carefully. And to their disgust, he not only showed no signs of getting weaker, but actually seemed to be improving. Finally, three days later, Art made a trip into town and returned late that evening. Ben was lying in his bunk in the back room of the cabin as Art spoke to his sister. Is he asleep yet? No. I'm just getting ready to give him his evening dose of medicine. Ah, good. Before you give him the medicine, we'll spike it with some of the stuff I brought back from town. What is it? Rat poison. One dose of this and he'll be the late Ben Chadwick. All right. You think we can get away with it? Uh, Sure, we can get away with it. (laughs) Tomorrow morning, we'll go into town and report his death to the doctor. He'll take it for granted the old buzzard died in his sleep. Now, go on. Get out his medicine and we'll fix it up. Right. A few minutes later, Grace and Art walked into the old man's bedroom. Ben was lying on his bunk examining the long-barreled Colt revolver that he always kept lying on the table at his bedside. Why, for heaven's sake, Grandfather, what are you doing with that gun? Just checking it over, that's all. Ever since I struck it rich, I don't feel safe at night unless I have this gun in easy reach. Well, you put it away now because it's time for you to go to sleep. All right, Lucy. Oh, Dad read it all. I suppose you're going to make me take another swig of that hogwash the doc prescribed for me. This medicine will help you sleep better. Yeah. You swallow it down, and then we'll put out the light. I suppose I may as well take it and get it over with. Hey, who's that? Sounds as though someone came in the front door. Yeah, I'll go take a look. Here, Grandfather. Yeah, uh, 
figure. Hey, what's the idea of busting in this way? Where's Ben Chadwick? In the bedroom. Why? Here, hurry up and take your medicine. Oh, right all right. Don't take that, what, Ben. Sergeant Preston, what in blazes are you doing back here? I'm here to arrest these two crooks posing as Frank and Lucy Hallam. Uh, you won't take us, Monty. As the sergeant whirled, Art's sudden blow caught him on the side of the jaw, but he recovered instantly. You asked for it, Gerald. Ah! Yeah. A moment later, the two men were slugging it out toe-to-toe in the narrow doorway. Meanwhile, Grace Gerald darted toward the table and snatched up Ben's gun. Hey, what are you going to do with that gun? Shut up, you old fool. As Ben you tried to interfere, you. she dealt him a vicious yeah. blow with a gun barrel. Oh, with oh. a groan, the old man collapsed on the bunk. Now then, Molly, I'll take care of you next. But the words were hardly out of her mouth when King sprang. Oh, help! Help! Help me! Get this dog away from me! What's your thing? Our hero was already weakening under the battering force of the sergeant's fists. And finally, a right to the jaw sent him sprawling backward on the floor. All right, I've had him now. Don't hit me again. Get up on your feet, then. Get up on your feet, All right. All right, King Ungard, boy. Right. You, Grace Terrell, get over here next to your brother. All right. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown. It wasn't until late the following day that Lucy and Frank Hallam arrived in Dawson. The sergeant took them out to Ben's cabin on Bonanza Creek. This time, Ben knew that he was seeing his real granddaughter. Hi, Thunder Lucy, I'd know you anywhere. You're the spitting image of your mom. Oh, Grandpa, I'm so glad you're all right. If it hadn't been for Sergeant Preston, things might have turned out a lot differently for all of us. I'm mighty grateful to you, Sergeant. Sure, oh, I well, That's so. all right. You don't need to thank me. How's your head, Ben? After any after effects from that blow? I reckon there's still a lump there where she hit me. Otherwise, I'm okay. In fact, the doc told me this morning I'm looking better than ever. Can you beat that? I always <laughs> said you'd live to be a hundred, Ben. And now that Lucy and Frank are here and the Gerald's are behind bars, I can say this case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented on Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations, is a listening treat especially designed for the whole family. Several generations have thrilled to the heroic exploits of Rin Tin Tin, the dog that's almost human. And now you can hear his further adventures every Sunday. The new series of Rinty's adventures are laid in the colorful and legend-filled era of the Pioneer West. His young master is Corporal Rusty, stationed at Fort Apache. During the troublesome post-Civil War era, the Army Cavalry finds plenty of action in keeping under control the renegade Indians who set fire to the early settlers' cabins. And as members of the Fort Apache Cavalry Unit, Corporal Rusty and Rin Tin Tin are engaged in many stirring escapades. Make sure your family enjoys the pleasurable listening on The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented by Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations. King leads the sergeant's team in a desperate pursuit along the dark and dangerous canyon trail. At every turn, the killer may be waiting, ready with his gun, ready for murder. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.